And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be fielded at the eight. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. So here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive. And they will be led out by their six-foot-six quarterback. And what I enjoyed in preparing for this game was talking not just with the coaching staff, but with him as well. And I found it interesting that the coaching staff sees him one way and he sees himself an entirely different way. Yeah, one thing he said he's always working on, he's, we know he's not bad at this, but his footwork always wants to improve that and that's something he's going to focus on here. And what was so funny, what the offensive coordinator say right off the top, he's got great footwork. Love his footwork. So this guy is never satisfied. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. And oh, right away, he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Ravens. To put it mildly, that is not the way anyone wants to start off a game. You fumble on your first offensive snap. But now what you're worried about is, does that linger throughout the game for your guys on offense? And how's the defense going to handle it? Because no one expects to run out on the field on the first play and have to all of a sudden start to play themselves. And now here come the Ravens. Opening minute and already a trip to the red zone. It's first and 10 at the 14. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. Now a handoff here to his running back. They'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. A 12-yard touchdown run as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening corner. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. No going for two. They'll kick the point after. And the Ravens lead at 7-0. short field and they made quick work of it just two plays to get into the end zone the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This one taken from the seven. 
And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. So here come the Lions now. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. So you can have an empty possession, punt the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. It's a pickup of five. Brings up second down. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. 